Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Amita Rari and coming up in today's newscast. Right ahead of Memorial Day, 59 soldiers killed in service this past year are joining the saddest count of all. Meantime, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant predicting Israel will likely be facing a multi-front military escalation in the near future. And later, the war on anti-Semitism never stops as now a Jewish teen getting a swastika carved at school. Ahead of Memorial Day, the Defense Ministry announced that 59 Israeli soldiers had been killed in service since Memorial Day one year ago. The total number of servicemen killed since the pre-state day is now 24,213. The Defense Ministry announced 59 soldiers were killed over the past year and an additional 86 disabled veterans passed away due to injuries sustained. The total of those servicemen killed has now reached 24,213, dating back to 1860. The numbers include all soldiers and police who died in the past year, some in the line of duty and others as a result of accident, illness or suicide. 31 terror victims were killed in attacks in the past year. Two victims of wounded in attacks died due to complications from serious injuries, bringing the total to 4,255 since 1851. Israel's Memorial Day begins tomorrow night when a one-minute siren will blare across the country. On Tuesday morning, a two-minute siren will sound ahead of national memorial ceremonies at Israel's 52 military cemeteries. And for the first time in Israel's history, the Defense Ministry building in Tel Aviv will be lit up on Memorial Day with the word Iskol, or remember, along with the number of fallen. This is part of the ministry's campaign to remember the fallen and also includes a website where people can light virtual memorial candles and share on social media platforms. Ahead of Memorial Day, in a rare shared declaration, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Defense Minister Gallant, Opposition Leader Lapid, and National Unity Leader Benny Gantz urged Israelis to put aside political issues and leave all protests outside of Memorial Day events. In an op-ed in today's Jerusalem Post, IDF Chief of Staff Herzl Alevi added his name to the declaration saying, it's on us to respect the cemeteries and not turn them into arenas of debate. Prime Minister Netanyahu also released a video addressing the Israeli public directly. In the last weeks, we discussed מגיע לכולנו לחוות את הימים הללו כשכל עם ישראל עומד מאוחד מאחורי גיבורנו בלי שום ויכוח. מי ייתן שנהיה ראויים להקרבה הגדולה של יקירנו, של גיבורנו. Russia, which currently holds the United Nations Security Council presidency, has reportedly refused Israel's request to postpone a UN meeting on the Middle East schedule for Tuesday, Israel's Remembrance Day, a day of national mourning. And ILTV's William Sharon has the details. While Israel will be mourning its fallen soldiers and terror victims on National Remembrance Day Tuesday, the United Nations will hold a special meeting on the Palestinian issue. According to Hebrew News Channel 12 report, Israeli's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Ardan, recently filed a request to Russia, which currently holds the United Nations Security Council rotating presidency, and asked to postpone the meeting. He conveyed to Russian UN officials the importance and significance of the National Day of Mourning and said it would be insensitive to hold a debate on the Middle East and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on such a day. However, Moskva refused to respond the event, which will be chaired by none other than Russian's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. According to the Channel 12 report, a diplomatic official said that Russia's decision is seen as retaliation for Israel's support of the Ukraine in the ongoing war there. 
The report also said the Palestinians view the move as a diplomatic victory and will send their foreign minister to the debate, which is expected to focus and criticize the Jewish state. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Israel has sought to remain neutral in the effort to avoid rift in ties with Russia, which controls the airspace over Syria and allows Israel to carry out operations against Iranian operatives in the country. Yet in recent months, Russia's close involvement with Iran has led to Israel criticize Moscow, including at the United Nations. And though Israel has so far refused to provide weapons to the Ukraine, it has agreed to provide defense military equipment to Kiev, a move frowned upon by Moscow. And joining us now with more on the planned UN meeting is Commander in the Reserves and Military Strategist, Dr. Eyal Pinko. Hi, Eyal. So what do you Hi. make of this? I mean, has Russia turned its back on Israel? Uh, look, uh, the Russian interests were always not uh, towards Israel. Uh, the Russian interests were always uh, towards uh, Syria, Iran, and the uh, uh, collaboration with those, between those countries, including, by the way, China, was always uh, strong and um, profound. And uh, once uh, Israel uh, goes more to Ukraine, while Iran is helping more Russia in its war in Ukraine, so it's very natural to Russia to go uh, towards Iran much, much stronger than before. And you know, Israel has desperately tried not to take a stance in a way, I mean, in the war in Ukraine, but Russia's increasingly close ties to Iran has forced Israel's hand in a way, isn't that so? Yeah, I think it, it goes from uh, two directions. First, uh, the EU, NATO, and the U.S. pressure towards Israel to help uh, Ukraine, uh, you know, with the uh, ongoing war over there. And uh, especially when we speak about non-military aid, such uh, uh, medicines, uh, permanent uh, hospitals, etc. While on the other end, as you said, uh, Israel tried to be balanced, not to go to this side or to the other side. Uh, we, because really, uh, Russia is important, very important to the Israeli strategic uh, needs in the Mediterranean. Uh, but uh, as uh, the ties between Russia and, and uh, Iran is getting stronger, and uh, Ru Russia became uh, more aggressive towards Israel uh, because of that, and uh, it's it's pretty natural, uh, sorry to say. So in this manner, Israel is turning more uh, to the Ukrainian side. Is there any connection between the Kremlin and Israel these days that you know about? I mean, what's the situation there? I think that there is still a coordination between the Israeli military, the IDF, and the Russian military, especially what is happening in Syria and Lebanon. So I do believe that this strong communication and coordination is still going on. Uh, but uh, from the diplomatic side, I'm not sure that uh, the things are so uh, good uh, between the, 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 the two sides, you know. You know, you brought me to the next question about Syria. What about Israel's actions there? I mean, we have seen uh, recent Israeli attacks against Iranian targets in Syria. Has the status quo remained unchanged on this front with regards uh, to the Russians? I think uh, that uh, during the last uh, half a year or so, uh, the Iranian... Um, um, enforce the aid that they are doing to Syria and enforcing their uh, staying in uh, Syria and in Lebanon as well. It's not only Syria. Uh, so we see enforcement, more missiles, rockets, a new, uh, new even uh, ammunition that the Iranian wants to test in the, uh, uh, in the fields of uh, the Middle East. So we see more and more activity of Quds Force, the, the, uh, the regime, the Iranian regime, uh, military forces as well in the intelligence. Uh, so, uh, while moving like uh, aid, or uh, I will tell it, I will say that as uh, innocent aid to Syria and Lebanon, uh, they are using this, uh, especially after the earthquake in, in Syria, they are using this opportunity that the world is thinking that, okay, they are only supporting the miserable uh, citizens of Syria because of the earthquake and what was happening and, and really miserable situation over there. They're using this opportunity to move more and more ammunition and weapons, as I said, and Israel is, uh, cannot stay still to those uh, actions. This really has always been uh, a problem in a way. And so what does Israel need to do or what should Israel do to repair ties with Russia? I mean, is it even possible at this point, more than what's existing now? I, I think it's very difficult. And uh, as, as Iran is helping much more, uh, to, Syri to Syria and to uh, Russia as well uh, over there. 
Uh, I don't see any any kind of uh, you know um, hope for tightening the, the the strategic ties with Russia.